What I Saw in the Sky Still Haunts Me, written by Jack Morrison in S. For nearly 10 years, I've kept quiet about this. If I told anyone, they'd say that I was crazy, and it would only force me to confront it anyways. I'd really prefer to pretend that it didn't happen. It did happen, though. And there isn't anything else that's ever happened in my life that has made me so afraid. It all started with a new house and a new place, hundreds of miles from my previous home. This was the norm for my family, so it felt pretty familiar when I stepped into another empty abode void of any furniture. I wandered around, as I always do, learning the layout and choosing a room, hopefully snagging the good one before one of my little sisters claimed it. Typically, I enjoyed this activity. Exploring the new place always brought out some quirk or feature that I found interesting. And sometimes I'd come across some remnants of the previous tenant's life there. And with that came all sorts of goofy thought experiments that I would amuse myself with for some time. In this case, the experience was muddled with various inconveniences. We just had to move south for some reason, so my fear of bugs had been amplified tenfold by this point. There were spiders and centipedes and even a lizard in the house. I was not happy with any of these encounters. Nevertheless, I continued my little expedition. Having learned the layout, I started doubling back, looking at things more thoroughly. I checked out the kitchen sink and I learned to work the shower, and eventually, I was down to the master bedroom. Aside from an airsoft pistol, the house had turned up nothing interesting so far. When I opened the cabinets under the sink in the master bathroom, that changed. There was a book in there. It didn't make any sense to me. This thing was pushed back as far as it could go. It was against the back corner of the cabinet's interior on the floor. If I didn't have decent eyes, I wouldn't have seen it. I had to reach under the pipes and stretch to retrieve it. It seemed like someone didn't want it to be found. The thing is, though, it wasn't anything nefarious. It was a copy of Whitley Stryber's Communion. Who the hell hides a book from a widely discredited science fiction author who claimed to be abducted by aliens? Maybe I was overthinking things, or maybe I wasn't, but I started to get a strange feeling that the book simply could not have ended up there accidentally. For a while, I left it alone, but I had this constant nagging feeling, and eventually... I broke down and I started reading the damned tone. It was full of nonsense as I had expected. It's hard to take much of what Stryber says seriously, especially given that he was an author before he was an abductee. Go figure, this is his most famous work, but I digress. Life went on and not having moved a TV in yet, I began watching the stars through my curtainless window every night. This is where the true strangeness began. We lived an hour from a major international airport, so I had assumed that they were planes. But a little at a time, I began to suspect that these odd yellow lights weren't actually planes. I went so far as to argue with myself about it for days. I found myself at the lunch table in my new school trying to convince myself that the damned book had my brain playing tricks on me. But there was this odd, nagging feeling, just like there was with the book. I feel crazy even writing it, but I swear, something was drawing me to this. It was like that effed up car crash thing, where you know it's awful, but you just can't look away. I knew I was paranoid, but I couldn't help following my gut. Something just wasn't right about these little yellow balls. They might have moved normally and acted like planes, but I just knew inside that they weren't. Every night I watched them. 
Amongst 30 or 40 regular planes, there would be three or four of them. They didn't blink and they passed over like planes as if they were going about their business. But there was still something strange, a gut feeling ringing in my bones. I don't really know how to explain it, but it was as if they were aware that I was watching them. This was starting to take over my life now. I can't tell you the name of a single teacher that I had, because I never paid attention to anything. All that I cared about was figuring out if these things were planes or not. I thought about it every minute of the day, and I stayed up as long as I could to watch but they never did anything that wasn't too plain-like to be sure. Until they did. I don't even know how many days passed before this happened, but it had to have been a week or better. I was lying there just the same as usual. There were maybe three lights in the sky. And I think that one or two of them were... odd... My head is going back and forth over whether or not these are planes, like it usually does, when I catch something moving at the edge of my vision. I'll do my best to describe what I saw, but I'll be honest, I bolted. Almost instantly. What I'm about to describe played out in about five seconds real time. The object was much blacker than the sky, so I could see the edges. They were sharply angled at the ends, and the entirety of the middle of this long, tube-like object was covered in the same eerie yellow light that the balls I had been watching seemed to be made of. What I saw wasn't scary at all, but what I felt changed my entire perspective on life. Call me insane if you want. I don't care. There isn't a better way to put it. This thing saw me. There isn't any doubt in my mind that when my eyes locked onto this object, whatever it was, it became aware of me instantly. I felt this in my effing soul. Then I was moving. It happened so fast, so automatically. I didn't think. Hell, I don't think I even had time to breathe. I was up and moving away from that thing as fast as humanly possible. I found myself in the hall outside of the room I'd seen it from, on my knees and then in the fetal position, shaking and crying. I was overwhelmed. I didn't understand why I was here. I hadn't really chosen to run. It, it, it just happened. It happened too fast for me to realize it, like it was a reflex. In my memory, it's just object, blur, floor of the hallway, crying like a little bitch. Really crying, too. After a few seconds, I realized I was outright sobbing. I felt my ribs shudder each time, but I couldn't move now. When that thing connected with me, I felt exposed. It came at a coincidental time when I was just asking myself if that other object was a plane. I think I actually heard my brain scream, well that's not an effing plane, before I bolted. It was like this thing was supposed to answer my question or settle my doubts. In a microsecond, something clicked. If this is an answer to my question, then something heard my question, which means something is in my head. No, 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 not in my head. It's the most personal, sacred place that I have. It's the only place in this world that nobody else can go, and you're taking it away. I felt violated, exposed, and afraid like I've never felt before. There wasn't anywhere to run, and there isn't any way to defend yourself from something that can see, hear, or read your thoughts. I was completely and totally helpless at the mercy of some unknown force in the darkness. Something truly primal came upon me then, and I moved, 
physically, on instinct for the first and only time in my life. I know what true fight or flight is now, and evidently, I'm a flighty little bitch. I don't know how long I laid there, but I think I fell asleep. There was only one comfort that I could muster, and that was that there were no windows that could see into the hall from the outside. If I laid there, whatever it was couldn't make eye contact again, and that somehow got me through it. I never watched out that window again, and I was glad my family moved around a lot when it finally bought me a ticket out. Years later, I wonder if whoever was there before we were saw something too. Perhaps they got that book seeking comfort, and when it didn't work... They hid it away and deserted the place, attempting to leave whatever they'd seen behind, much the same way that I've kept this to myself for so long. I'll probably never get the truth, but I know one thing for sure. I've never been so terrified before, and I don't think I'll ever be again either.